Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week starting January the 22nd. And I hope you had a great trading week last week and looking forward to this week. And uh, before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, my content with the uh, YouTube world or wherever you're really watching this from as it helps uh, support the uh, channel and gets the quality content um, out to uh, those that potentially may need it. And uh, thank you for all of your uh, likes and comments. I appreciate all of them. So getting into the week ahead. So it will be an important week in the US with investors closely monitoring the advanced estimates of Q4 GDP growth rate, PCE price index and personal income and spending. Additionally, attention will be directed toward durable goods orders, manufacturing and services PMIs and new and pending home sales. So lots going on uh, in the United States when it comes to um, data supporting um, at least uh, some GDP, uh, either growth or, or contraction, as well as um, PCE prices index, which is inflation um, based. So uh, on the global stage, interest rate decisions will be made in the euro area, Japan and Canada. Also, manufacturing and services PMI will be closely watched in Australia, Japan, the euro area and the UK. And furthermore, Germany will release the LFO business climate and GFK consumer confidence indices, while Australia will present the NAB business confidence. So again, lots going on in terms of data uh, this week. So uh, getting into the charts and starting off on the dollar index, and this is an equally weighted uh, dollar index. And for those of you who are not really sure or maybe watching for the first time, um, you know, why and how to use the um, equally weighted dollar index, I do have a video here that was uh, produced five days ago. Uh, it says Forex strategy using the equally weighted index to identify uh, the best Forex trade setups and pairs. And also as well, uh, you have the calculation for pretty much all of the uh, equally weighted um, currency indexes and so uh, yeah I basically just go over uh, why I use them why the DXY is probably a bit more outdated and um, also as well an insight how to uh, apply it to your trading so you can choose really the best levels and so um, looking at the equally weighted uh, dollar index and we have come up into this area of uh, supply now my bias actually is to is more leaning towards uh, buying the uh, the dollar at the moment, but because we're up at this supply zone, this expensive area, I'm going to have to really wait for a pullback into a level of uh, demand here uh, for some confluence. And so uh, when we look at this from a technical analysis perspective, like I said where just really for, for more confluence and understanding where you are from an expensive or cheap area, uh, the dollar is really at an expensive area. It was expensive back in uh, December, therefore prices went to the downside. We've reached this expensive area again and the, the question is, is will, we, will it be you know expensive depending on what happens with the data this, uh, this week? Now, um, really uh, all roads kind of lead to um, uh, the uh, interest rates or the expectation of interest rate cuts and the market has really kind of priced in the first rate cuts um, for March and um, now they're actually pricing out those cuts, right? And so cuts, if you don't know, typically devalue a currency. And we've had uh, Fed officials basically come out and say that the data doesn't show it's time for a rate cut yet. And I've been saying this uh, for a while. And in fact, I mean, if you've been watching my weekly videos that I kind of disagreed with the fact that they may cut in uh, March. Of course, anything was possible, but I thought it was uh, unlikely. And it says here that Dali says it's premature to think 
cuts are around the corner and Fred's Bostick and Goolsby emphasize data in uh, data's role in thinking. Of course, the data needs to support rate cuts. So what the Fed are really want to see is not only inflation coming down to their 2% target, but they also want to see um, uh, economic data, right? So they want to see a real kind of contraction in the economy. Now, I do think overall that they will cut. We are in the cutting cycle of the um, uh, of the economic cycle in terms of um, you know the contraction phase and the rate cutting cycle, but I think that's probably maybe going to happen more towards uh, April May rather than uh, rather than March. And so what you're also seeing as well when we look at the FedWatch tool, um, if you look at what's going on in March, and so we've you know we've got January 24th up here, and we've got March there, and if you look at the probabilities. The probabilities of a no change is now uh, 52% and an ease is 47%. And uh, uh, just uh, about, about a week ago, right, there was actually um, a 19% chance of a hold. And now we're looking at a 52% chance of a hold. And what's that's pretty much done is, is that the market has got ahead of itself in pricing in um, the devaluation of the uh, the dollar, and so um, and so now with the data not really supporting a rate cut uh, for the dollar, the markets had to price out the uh, the rate cuts, and so that is really what has uh, strengthened the dollar over the past uh, well, since the beginning really of the year. Right, we've seen uh, the dollar really kind of um, rise as the um, the market has priced out rate. Uh, cuts. So when the market was pricing in rate cuts, this is what we saw, right? And then now we haven't seen the data really support those rate uh, cuts yet. And so the market is now pricing out those rate cuts. So um, I do think there's an opportunity to continue to buy the dollar. But again, if the data starts supporting rate cuts sooner, right? So if there's some bad news or worse than expected news, for the uh, dollar this week in terms of uh, GDP um, and uh, some other data that contribute to GDP, then in fact, you're likely to see the dollar start to uh, decline in, in value uh, a bit more, um, rather than if this maybe being more of a pullback, it's probably maybe more of a sustained move as the market then start will start to price in and increase the probabilities of a rate cut right so keep an eye on the fed watch uh, tool um so that's where we are with the dollar overall uh, looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen um again with the dollar being uh, quite uh, uh strong and appreciating based off of uh, rate cut expectations or the or the pushback in rate cut expectations we've seen obviously the dollar start to uh move higher now with the yen it's a slight different story where um the bank of japan are actually looking for uh inflation to uh to increase and so uh, and away from their two percent targets so it says here that japan's slowing inflation supports case for bank of japan to wait longer and so services prices continue to rise at fastest clip uh, in 30 years and slide in electricity prices deepen uh, cost of lodging soar. But overall, um, Japan's inflation is slowing. And so if Japan's inflation is slowing and it's not necessarily going, you know, trending away from their 2% target in terms of trending higher, then um, the Bank of Japan are likely to uh, hold rates for longer rather than hike. And so what that's doing is, is that is basically putting pressure on the Japanese yen in terms of its uh, uh, pricing in of rate hikes, which basically means that it should get weaker, which is the reason why you're seeing, uh, you know, on one hand, the, the, the US dollar appreciate because of rate, um, the expectation of rate cuts being pushed further out, but also as well, you have um, the expectation of rate hikes from the from the uh, Bank of Japan also being pushed further out, which is weakening the yen. And so ultimately, you can look for short trades right now. 
or you can look for pullbacks into a uh, demand zone uh, before getting long and looking to buy the um, the uh, the US dollar. And by the way, as well, if you're uh, maybe a bit struggling to kind of understand what I'm talking about in terms of uh, leading and lagging rate uh, cuts and hikes, if you go down to my videos on my uh, YouTube channel, if you scroll across, there's a um, a uh, video that I've created called Forex Fundamentals Trading Webinar, use leading and lagging interest rates to predict uh, big trends. And this is the one, right? So that's what you're looking for. And really that will explain um, interest rates in terms of um, leading and lagging and who's cutting first, who's cutting last, or who's hiking first and who's hiking last. And that will basically have a major effect on, well, knowing that um, will put you in, um, you know, uh, give you the knowledge really to understand why currencies are strengthening and uh, or or devaluing over the medium to long term. In the short term, typically it's about you know positioning. But uh, that's a great video to watch, and so this is the reason why you're seeing prices uh, do what they do, uh, or what they've done, and maybe continue to do uh, what they're going to do in the near future. So um, at the moment, it looks like the dollar really is the one to buy. So any pullbacks should be buying opportunities until really the uh, data supports the narrative of either a yen hike or uh, a dollar cut sooner. And the dollar CAD uh, this week, uh, again, I was saying this week that, or last week, in last week's video, that I was probably more longer the um, uh, the the US dollar than I would be the Canadian dollar. Although we are getting a bit of a pullback on the um, on the Canadian dollar as the Bank of Canada actually are uh, may come out and be a bit more hawkish as they had inflation data come out that was uh, supportive of more of a hold rather than a uh, cut sooner. So um, I do think overall though that the dollar, the US dollar should be the one to buy out of the two. Um, and so any pullbacks are buying opportunities. If you do want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar, then we've got this level here, which would be you know technically the 136s, uh, quite decent. You also have a level of um, support as well in that zone that is termed resistance. So that's some extra confluence within that area. So that's really where you're looking at, I think from a demand zone perspective, I think that uh, 1336 three, uh, to 1335s are decent for a potential long trade. And if you, if you drag that back as well, you can see that that has got some decent confluence within that area. So, um, yeah, looking all right technically, but my bias would be more to buy the US dollar over the Canadian dollar. Pound dollar, the pound um, has gone through uh, some decent news this, this week, and, and I say last week, and um, the, uh, yeah, there was some, um, but there was some really disappointing news in terms of uh, retail sales. And so UK retail sales drop, raising odds of mild recession in 2023. So December decline was steepest since lockdown three years ago and results feed case for Bank of England to cut rates. Um, and so, yeah, interest basically uh, uh, retail sales came out and came in the lowest it's been since really, you know, January 2021. And so, um, Retail sales obviously have an effect on the economy and spending and um, what uh, retailers are really kind of taking in. So from that perspective, um, if the pound in the UK were to enter into really a recession, you should see the pound actually start to uh, to weaken. And so uh, let's see what happens there. Also as well, you do have a supply zone. So if you are looking to uh, take this trade in terms of uh, short trade, then you're looking for really kind of pullbacks into that supply zone before looking at short trade. Or if you're looking for long trades, I would say a move down into maybe the one two sixes down to one two five fifties, one two fives before looking at um, getting long. But ultimately, um, this pound this, this pair is a bit of a trickier pair to, to trade. Um, it's not necessarily clear cut, but my bias would probably be more again to kind of lean towards potentially uh, the dollar um, in the short term. But if the pound can hold out in terms of um, 
the uh, rate cuts coming later than the uh, Federal Reserve, then I think the pound is probably going to be still supported on, on buys. Uh, pound yen, and the pound yen has come up to a decent level, uh, a really kind of like a market high. We haven't been as high for quite a while, um, well over a year. And so if you are looking at uh, some short trades, meaning that you want to take advantage of maybe some sort of uh, pound um, weakness, or potential weakness based off of um, the, the the fact that they may enter into a recession then or mild recession at least then this is actually a really nice level to look for uh, some shorts we are at market highs just be mindful that um, this level looks like it could be stop hunted there was already a stop hunt above here but the uh, the Japanese yen at the moment I think because it's quite weak this is probably a bit more susceptible to potential uh, stop hunts above the uh, level it could be but hopefully not if you are in this trade if you're looking for just a pullback on the uh, the pound then this area uh, in terms of uh, uh, demand is decent you also have a uh, some recent support and resistance in this area as well as uh, some technical uh, confluence so nice in that zone for a potential uh, buy on the uh, pound uh, yen or right now in terms of a short trade and maybe taking advantage of um, the uh, pound weakness and also as well I think the Bank of Japan I think if not this week the maybe the, the actually at the end of the month I think it is actually no it is this week uh, Japan will be um, announcing their interest rates and what's going on so that could actually, if they're hawkish, then they could act. This can actually be a really nice trade to the downside. Uh, pound, sorry, dollar, euro dollar, and um, euro dollar this week. We've had uh, supply here from the beginning or late last year. Um, we haven't really had uh, a major trade setup. There was a bit of a stop hunt around these uh, these lows here, but um, yeah, I think my bias would be more to look for short trades within that this supply zone at the moment. Now, uh, the euro, uh, just like uh, every other central bank. Um, You've, uh, the the ECB are basically pushing back against uh, the market's expectations for rate cuts. And uh, and so it says here, policymakers, including Christine Lagarde this week, explicitly embraced the idea of a summer rate cut as traders ignored pushbacks from her and her colleagues against their bets that monetary easing will kick off in the spring. So the market are pricing in um, rate cuts uh, around April and uh, Christine Lagarde is pretty much pushing back on that and saying no it's unlikely that it's like it's likely to be more June right more summertime and so again I think the euro will be um, more of a buy if uh, for example the Fed start to cut first right and the dollar start to cut first if that is seen by the markets then uh, you're going to likely see at least a pullback up into, um, you know, maybe past these up, up to maybe the 111s and possibly the 112s. Now, the situation with their economy, the euro economy, isn't looking great. In fact, the US is much better in terms of um, where they are in the economic cycle. So it's my belief, at least until the, uh, the next maybe month or so, that hopefully we probably may see some more downside but I think once the Federal Reserve do start to look to cut rates and if they cut rates before the ECB and also as well if the ECB do dodge a recession in terms of you know the eurozone economy dodges a recession then in fact you're likely to see uh, the euro I think strengthen because that will uh, um, basically give the uh, confidence for the European Central Bank to actually hold for at least a bit longer. But if they go into a recession sooner, and if the recession is seen as a deeper recession, then I mean, I see further weakness uh, for the euro in at least in the short term. So uh, let's see uh, what happens here. But the path of resistance for now, I think, is still continued 
uh, to the downside, at least in the short term. Euro yen, um, euro yen again. If you want to be a buyer of the euro, probably at the moment the yen might be uh, the best bet until obviously we get um, data supporting uh, buying the yen. But um, but yeah, I think any um, any long trades in terms of um, like I said, buying a euro, you're looking at probably that zone there. Which does align with uh, you've got a level of support and resistance, and you've got resistance on a daily resistance, then support. So any pullbacks into this zone is going to be uh, really nice technically as a technical buy. Um, but once the yen, um, if the yen do start to look to high rates, then as they are the only central bank to high rates, if prices do come up to these um, supply highs, then Ultimately, this is going to be a really nice area to look for yen buys and euro yen shorts um, towards the rest of the year. But again, I think the yen at the moment they need that you know inflation to really you know inflation numbers to kind of kick in and start to move away from their two percent target in terms of uh, you know towards the three four percent. So let's see what happens there. So those are the options: euro, pound. Uh, my bias again. I'm saying over the past uh, few weeks that my bias would be more to buy the pound over the uh, the euro. And you're seeing that kind of play out on the chart. So we've got supply zone. Um, you're looking at really pullbacks, I think. And again, both uh, countries uh, aren't doing well in terms of they're both looking at facing you know stagnation and 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 a recession. But um, in terms of the market pricing in, uh, you know, the rate cuts, it looks like the pound may be slightly later than the euro. And if that is the case, then the pound should be more supported uh, against the euro, which would mean that the path of these resistance should still continue to be to the downside. So any pullbacks into uh, that supply zone will be quite nice. Uh, also, as well, you do have a level of uh, some support here that turns into now resistance anywhere around uh, that price zone there or just above it is going to be you know really nice for a potential technical setup uh, to the short side if you want to get involved in that. Uh, the Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar, um, not necessarily a pair that I'm looking at at the moment but I know many traders do look at this pair. Uh, so we've got a level of uh, demand. So if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, which at the moment I do think that the Australian dollar is still looking like a potential buy, um, although they didn't have necessarily the best news. There was some um, employment news that came out, which wasn't which wasn't great. But um, again, looking at where they are in terms of uh, their interest rate uh, cutting cycle, uh, they are one of the later central banks to start to uh, cut rates. So that should continue to support the Australian dollar overall, which then means uh, that there could be a potential buying opportunity at some point. I don't necessarily think it's now. I think once the US dollar do go into their uh, rate cutting cycle, then the Australian dollar is likely to be um, a buy. But for now, I do think that the uh, this pair is a bit more tricky to trade. So not necessarily a pair that I would look for, but technically um, you do have a really nice zone on here where again, you've got not only demand, but you've got a level of support and resistance in there. So um, I do think this is nice. The fresher area of demand, this level has been touched once, twice already, three times. Of course, it could bounce from here, but I do think that if it goes down to beyond the 65 round number, and just below that, I think that should be quite nice for a um, for a buy trade in terms of a technical buy trade. But again, you need to see the, the dollars really start to have some um, some disappointing news in terms of their economy and um, if, if the market really starts to price in rate cuts sooner then that should actually still support the Australian dollar or you're looking for just uh, some pullbacks into supply and looking for a short trade in terms of buying the US dollar and finally gold gold uh, this week in terms of uh, supply and demand we've had 
fact, a nice demand zone there. Um, a bit of a stop hunt, matter of fact, at this area. So a bit of, but it was a stop hunt. But whether that stop hunt follows through now is, is, is something else. Um, it's a tricky trade to take at the moment simply because the dollar is uh, continuing to uh, defy um, the odds in terms of um, a rate cut in March. And so uh, there could be some more weakness in terms of um, you know dollar strength and gold weakness. But ultimately in the rate cutting cycle, and once the, uh, the dollar uh, does start cutting interest rates, then what should happen is uh, the, the gold should start to um, increase in value as the dollar decreases in value, right? And so any pullbacks into you know these demand zones, I think are gonna be nice uh, buying opportunities for gold um, as we get later into the year. If you are looking at um, uh, selling gold, then your supply zone is gonna be starting at the 2050s around there before looking at uh, short trades on gold. So short trades on gold would be buying the dollar, um, but if you're looking to buy gold, then you're looking at um, uh, at least the Federal Reserve to really look to start uh, cutting rates. And once that starts to happen, you zoom out, we should then start to make some new potential new highs and higher highs in terms of uh, you know the uh, the economic cycle where we're in the contraction and potential uh, recession phase. So uh, that's it for this week. I hope you have a great trading week, and uh, speak to you all soon. Uh, take care.